Listener Production. Hello, Benzion Siebert and Sasha Barbagat with you for a special additional episode of The Briefing. Australia stood still on Saturday afternoon as news emerged of a mass stabbing at the Westfield Shopping Centre at Bondi Junction in Sydney's eastern suburbs. Six people, five women and one man, died after being attacked by 40-year-old Queensland man Joel Couchy. Couchy was shot by police and died at the scene. The stories have shaken us all. Sasha, I'm in Melbourne, you're in Sydney. What do we know so far? Hey, Bencion. Yeah, so 17 people were stabbed in the rampage on Saturday afternoon. Four women who were aged between 20 and 55 died at the scene and a man and woman died later in hospital. So six people were killed by the attacker. And one of the most shocking stories to come out of Saturday and one that everyone in my circle has been really hit quite hard by is that of Ashley Good and her nine-month-old baby. Uh, So the 38-year-old mum was shopping with her baby Harriet, who was in a pram, when Couchy approached them and attacked the infant. Ashley grabbed the baby and actually passed her to two men nearby to try and get her to protection and safety. And Ashley was then attacked herself and tragically she later died in hospital. Her family has given an update on the condition of Harriet, her baby, uh, saying she's in a serious but stable condition after undergoing what was probably life-saving surgery. Um, And Ashley at the time had actually been shopping with high-profile Sydney defamation lawyer Rebecca Giles. Rebecca had left Ashley and her daughter just a short time before the attack occurred. Sash, what do we know about the other victims? Yeah, so five victims have so far been named. I mentioned 38-year-old Ashley Good. Then we have 25-year-old Dawn Singleton, who's the daughter of uh, Sydney businessman John Singleton, 47-year-old Jade Young, who is an architect from Sydney's eastern suburbs, 55-year-old Pikria Dacia from Georgia in Europe, and 30-year-old Faraz Ahmed Tahir, who was a security guard working his first shift at the shopping centre. Queensland police say Couchy himself was a security guard and New South Wales police are investigating right now if his former role had played any part in the motivation of the attacks, which we still don't know. Two of his murder victims are believed to have no family in Australia as well. We've been told it will take some time to formally identify them as our authorities here have to get in touch with their loved ones overseas. And just on Dawn Singleton, who was the 25-year-old woman who was killed, we're told she was scheduled to marry her childhood sweetheart in weeks, which is just so devastating to think that could happen, you know, so close to what is supposed to be such a joyous and happy event. And Dawn is one of three daughters uh, of John Singleton, and he had Dawn during his marriage to lawyer Julie Martin. She is one of Singleton's eight children. And in terms of who is in hospital at the moment, uh, at this point of recording, nine women, two men and the nine-month-old baby are all in hospital. Three of those people are in intensive care. And just a bit more uh, from Ashley Good's family, I mentioned they put out a statement uh, yesterday. They've said they are reeling from the terrible loss of Ashley, a beautiful mother, daughter, sister, partner, friend, all round outstanding human and so much more. Uh, They've thanked the public for their outpouring of love for Ashley and their baby girl. And yesterday we saw North Melbourne players in the AFL wear black armbands in their game against Geelong and that's because Ashley is the second of four children of former North Melbourne player and director Kerry Good. So we've seen responses across the country and we have heard from uh, Anthony Albanese who uh, laid flowers at the scene yesterday and he was on 60 Minutes last night. Let's have a listen. This shocked the nation. People go about their business on a Saturday afternoon, many Australians go and do their shopping then. So many families would have been out and about. It's a very large shopping centre that I'm very familiar with. And the thought that people have lost their lives and many others injured, and of course thousands traumatised, comes as a great shock in a peace-loving nation like Australia. Absolutely. And what do we know about Couchy? 
huge investigation is obviously getting underway. Bondi Junction, Westfield was a crime scene yesterday. Police are still trying to piece everything together. Here's what we know so far, though. It is believed that Couchy was living with schizophrenia. Uh, and while they are yet to establish any sort of clear motive, they are investigating whether he was specifically targeting women in the attack because five of those killed were women. One was the male security guard. Witnesses have described Couchy dressed in an Australian Kangaroos Rugby League jersey and we've seen he was brandishing a 30-centimetre hunting knife. Police told us yesterday they don't know how he got hold of that knife and that as well will form part of the ongoing investigation. We do know he'd been renting a small storage unit but had no fixed address. It's believed he was actually staying in that storage unit after he'd moved to Sydney. So police have told us uh, he travelled here from Queensland last month. And we learned yesterday he'd been treated by Queensland Health for mental health issues more than a decade ago. And we know that Couchy's family contacted authorities after believing they had seen their son in the footage that was being broadcast on TVs across the country. And they did release a statement yesterday. So his parents, Andrew and Michelle, said, we are absolutely devastated by the traumatic events that occurred in Sydney. Our thoughts and prayers are with the families and friends of the victims and those still undergoing treatment at this time. Joel's actions were truly horrific and we are still trying to comprehend what has happened. He has battled with mental health issues since he was a teenager. We are in contact with both the New South Wales Police Force and Queensland Police Service and have no issues with the police officer who shot our son as she was only doing her job to protect others and we hope she is coping all right. So do we know how she stopped the attack? So the first attack happened outside a bakery on level four before Couchy moved through the shopping centre killing Ashley Good and Dawn Singleton and the security guard who raced to confront him. And the other two female victims died thereafter. So Inspector Amy Scott from the New South Wales Police Force uh, was one of dozens of police officers who rushed to the scene as reports were starting to emerge of what was unfolding. And police say Inspector Scott ran towards Couchy and she called out for him to drop the knife. And when he didn't, she shot him. And she then started performing CPR on him to see if he could be saved, but then had to respond to other people who were injured in her vicinity. And we know Couchy died at the scene. An eyewitness did speak to Nine News on Saturday night. Let's have a listen to that. I was behind the police officer when she uh, she discharged a firearm. And uh, I have to admit, she was amazing. Yeah. She, uh, she gave him clear instructions. He went st- lunged straight at her and she... She shot him. She went straight from shooting this guy to giving CPR. And then what she did is she went to straight to policing. She moved people away. She had no choice. She was alone. He would have he would have killed her. Do you think she's a hero? Um, undoubtable. Without question. Yeah, she was amazing. Yeah, such an incredible story of what uh, Inspector Scott did. And here's Anthony Albanese also speaking about her on 60 Minutes last night. Amidst the carnage and the atrocity uh, we do have as well to give thanks to some of the best of our Australian character that was shown. The uh, inspector, Amy Scott, who ran towards danger, who risked her own life to end the carnage. We've also heard from the boss of the New South Wales Police Association. His name's Kevin Morton. And he says he's spoken with Amy and, you know, inevitably she's getting this hero treatment. Uh, But he says she told him she was just doing her job, which is such a hallmark of our police officers. They really do believe that they are just doing what they are supposed to, even though what she did inevitably saved so many lives. Morton says Amy will have a lot of support over the coming days and weeks as well, obviously. And what about the shoppers who were there at the time? Yeah, so as you can imagine, Bencion, it was absolute chaos and confusion when this started. I mean, I'm sure you've seen the footage, people just running all over the place, not knowing where to go, also not knowing what's going on. I can't imagine how terrifying that would be to 
you're in this situation where you know something bad is happening. You don't know how many people are involved. You don't know where that person is or people are and just running and and not knowing where to go or where safety might be. So police said people locked themselves in storerooms. They hid in change rooms, some for hours. We saw a lot of um, shops getting people in and then just shutting their shutters down so that the attacker couldn't get in. Shoppers also just fled the Westfield altogether and left their cars in the car park. So people had to be let in on Saturday night. Some had left their passports in their cars and they needed to fly overseas. So they had to go in and get them. One man had to be let in because he'd left his dog in the car. We heard from Claudia Paris, who spoke to Sky News shortly after the attacks. And she works at the dermatologist clinic at the centre. And then I go to the bathroom because I have a few minutes and then I come out of the bathroom and I just see, I hear gunshots. I just hear there's kids screaming everywhere. I brought as many kids as I could to me back to the bathroom and got them all in the, um, just behind the doors in the bathroom and got them to put their feet up because I didn't know if it was like a shooter because that's all that I heard. And then I was just calling my family and just saying, oh, I think I'm going to die. Like, like, I'm like saying goodbye and everything. Like I've never experienced something like that in my life. It's just crazy. And then as soon as I heard they're like evacuate now, evacuate now, I was just like, I came out back to my clinic, just getting all the kids out of the clinic as well. And just telling them to just run. The recounted stories from Saturday night do kind of make you think of incidents overseas where we've seen this and we're so lucky in Australia. We're just not exposed to that sort of thing. And and you can hear just the terror in her voice and how how shocking and confronting it would have been, not to mention absolutely terrifying. And I think that's the thing that has made people uh, respond so strongly to this is that everyone goes to the shops on a Saturday Arvo. No one thinks twice about it. You never expect for something like that to happen, especially here in Australia. And we did hear from New South Wales Premier Chris Minns. He was actually in Japan on a holiday. He flew home uh, and here's what he said to 2GB. It's literally everyone's worst nightmare. Uh, an afternoon with family or friends at a shopping centre being displaced with a, a wicked and a violent crime. Uh, I can just, I feel terrible for those that have gone through so much heartache this afternoon and I want them to know if they are listening or their family or their friends are listening that the entire state is behind them. Uh, we've all been touched by how shocking this is I'm I'm very grateful that the best of us have stood up in the face of such wickedness that we've ever been with New South Wales Police, proving yet again how valuable and important they are. We've also heard from some world leaders. Yeah, King Charles released a statement. He wrote, uh, My wife and I are utterly shocked and horrified to hear of the tragic stabbing incident in Bondi. Our hearts go out to the families and loved ones of those who have been so brutally killed during such a senseless attack. The Prince and Princess of Wales also released a statement on Instagram saying they were shocked and saddened by the events and sent their thoughts to everyone who has been affected. Uh, Anthony Albanese also said that US President Joe Biden, UK Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, uh, NZ's PM Christopher Luxon and others in Australia's region have all sent messages of support and condolence. Sash, it's been just such an absolutely awful weekend. Mm, And as I said in the headlines this morning, the brutal and sudden nature of the loss of life in a place that's just so ordinary and normal and familiar, I think is what has been the most shocking and gut-wrenching for people who weren't involved, who were just sitting at home on Saturday Arvo and saw the events happen on their TVs and on social media. Look, I expect that the floral tributes will continue to grow at Bondi Junction. We saw them all throughout yesterday and into last night. Flags are flying at half-mast around the country today. Uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese put out a request to, uh, you know, the state leaders and said, if you'd like to participate, you're more than welcome. Uh, Melbourne last night lit up its monuments in white. So it's clear that while this has happened in Sydney, it is something that has touched people across the country. And the coming days and weeks will be really tough. But I think that if we've seen anything over the last couple of days, you know, and it's something that I love about living in this country. It is our ability as a community to really come together and we can show love and grace and support to people and each other. And I think that's the one thing that I will take from this as we kind of move forward 
is that, you know, we are a community and we do come together to support each other. And from everyone at the briefing, we do send our condolences and our thoughts to all of those affected by the Bondi Junction attack. But if you are struggling and you need someone to talk to, you can always call Lifeline on 13 11 14. And your GP as well is also a really good source of help if you need further support. Well, Sasha, thanks so much for that. And yeah, absolutely. We're sending our love and condolences to everyone affected. Listener.